Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy blog. This is, it is August 2nd, 2018, and for this segment, we are going to discuss a, an ongoing crisis that is plaguing Florida's coastal areas and waterways. Now, over the past eight months, the west coast of Florida has been impacted by a severe red tide, and, and that, that's, that's a form of microorganism bloom in the ocean that can create toxic environments, both for marine life and for people on the waters. And on the east coast of Florida, stretching inland to Lake Okeechobee, Florida is experiencing a severe cyanobacteria bloom, which is a blue-green algae bloom, which is also making waterways toxic both for human beings and for animals. And on some of the Florida beaches, masses of sargasso seaweed are, are washing up due to a, a major sargo sargasso seaweed bloom in the Caribbean. Now, there are climate change related signals for uh, mo most of these events. The Sargasso seaweed bloom, uh, there's some su suspicion that human caused climate change is contributing to the bloom, but there's, there hasn't been a conclusive scientific, ev hasn't been conclusive scientific evidence at this point, although some, some fingerprints may have been established with regards to increasing ocean acidity and increasing sargasso seaweed blooms, as well as various wind changes in the North Atlantic that, that may be funneling more sargasso seaweed into the Caribbean. But, but with regards to algae, increasing water temperature certainly facilitates more cyanobacteria blooms and and increasing water temperature also facilitates longer term red tides. Now, increasing rainfall intensity over land, also due to human caused climate change, creates an added pulse of nutrients into the world's oceans and waterways. And this can provide more food for blooms such as sargasso seaweed and algae. And this signal is one that is very strong in past hothouse events. And, and, and I'm, I'm going to talk about that a bit later because we have some new science on the issue. But, but when you increase water temperature and increase nutrient flow into the world's oceans, it changes the ocean's chemistry and generates a more toxic environment. So, so there, are, there, are, there are various climate change related fingerprints to toxic environments like we are seeing now in Florida. So for the news, and, and I just like to add that, that Florida is presently experiencing a bit of an emergency. And according to reports from the Weather Channel, as of a few days ago, toxic algae blooms have resulted in at least 15 people being sent to the emergency room due to contact with toxic waters. And it's worth noting that, that cyanobacteria and, and large algae blooms can produce a number of biotoxins, including a, a, a nasty rotten eggs smelling hydrogen sulfide gas, which is is very harmful to human beings. I'm going to talk a little bit about that later and, and to wildlife. And in addition, nearly 4,000 dead fish have washed up on Sanibel Island beaches due to effects related to the red tide. And, and the red tide produces a different set of, of biotoxins, but can also be very lethal to, to wildlife in the water. And that's what we are seeing now in Florida, just a nasty soup of, 
uh, of various toxins who, which, whose growth has been enhanced by increasingly warm waters and increasing nutrient outflow into the Gulf of Mexico, into the ocean, and into Florida's waterways. And here are some, some pictures from Twitter of various wildlife that has been seen washing up on the west coast of Florida near Sanibel Island. And due to these, these severe impacts. Now, I'd like to talk a little bit about some new science. Florida is just one region of the world that is experiencing increasing toxic algae blooms and toxic microorganism blooms and, and impacts, negative impacts to ocean health that are linked to human-caused climate change and, and also linked to increasing nutrient flows from into rivers and oceans due in part to an increasing severe rainfall events, increasing intensity of rainfall events, which flush more nutrients into waters. Now, there's a new study that has been put out by the University of Toronto, and, and what, what has been found is that that if you look back into past climates, and, and there, there's been a, a quite a bit of evidence of this if you look into the deep past, but, but more and more science is looking at, at this issue, the issue of hothouse events and their impacts on ocean chemistry. And this particular study looked at the Paleocene-Eocene thermal maximum period that occurred about 50, 50 million years ago, which resulted in a mass extinction in the world's oceans. And, but, but if you look at, at other hothouse events, you also see a mass extinction in the world's oceans. So, and, and the worst mass extinction, the, the Permian extinction, also produced a, a very harmful ocean environment, which is thought to have had knock-on effects to the terrestrial environment due to, a, to an amazing chemistry change and overall toxicity. But this, this study looked particularly at the Paleocene-Eocene thermal maximum period. And, and what it found is that increasing temperatures reduced ocean oxygen, uh, ocean oxygen content, and this increased the number of anaerobic sulfur eating bacteria and allow that to, to thrive. And, and as a result, these sulfur eating bacteria produced hydrogen sulfide gas. And, and I'm just gonna read a quote from the study. So one of the authors notes that this, and, and this is in the sense of reduced oxygen content due to warming ocean waters, will affect species that live deep in the ocean. Most notably, it would impact high-level predators like tuna and whales, and in turn have a ripple effect on fish species living, living in the commercially more relevant shallow waters up to 200 meters below sea level, and thus, and those living in the middle depth approximately 1,000 meters be below the ocean surface. The middle and deep ocean are the largest and least explored part of our planet, home to giant squid and weird deep sea fish, but also some commercially important fish like the Patagonian toothfish, otherwise known as the Chilean sea bass. And the authors go on to note that, that if human fossil fuel burning continues to warm the ocean, it's a major threat to the world's fisheries and to a number of key species due to the increased production of hydrogen sulfide bacteria starting in the deeper and middle portions of the ocean. But as the earth warms, this, this hydrogen sulfide production tends to rise up by movement of what they call the, the chemocline layer, which is a chemical layer in the world's oceans. So, so Florida is not an issue in isolation. As you continue to warm the earth, 
you get a risk of, of other severe impacts. Thank you for joining.